But at the moment, Councillor Williamson has offered to uh, have an amendment that goes between 12 and 15, I, is that correct? So I'd like to speak to that if I can now. And uh, he's got a seconder in the form of Councillor Turner. So now we've got an amendment ahead of us and Councillor Williams would like to talk to that. Yeah. And uh, so just wait till he talks to that and he will have his right of reply later on. Mr Mayor, the, the reason I wanted to move this amendment is not it doesn't need answers to specific questions. It's just leaving some flexibility there for questions that will flow over time, answers that will inform us. But I just didn't want to see us locked in with that 15 as an only 15. And that's why I wanted to do it. While I've got a speaking slot and got nearly five minutes and I don't normally take these things, I want to just raise a couple of others. I think we should explore how we could avoid by-elections. And let me explain that. You do not need by-elections for list MPs in Parliament. You just take the next person. And you don't even need by-elections for constituencies for a certain period of time, like when Jacinda Ardern left, there was no by-election needed to fill the seat. We don't stand normally in political sort of parties against each other in, in the council or on local boards. And I thought it was tragic in Howick where one particular person stood for the local board, went to the swearing in, got sworn in, and because she didn't get to be made the chair, quit immediately and cost the poor local bloody peep ratepayers a by-election cost. It seemed to me the most sensible thing would have been next person off, next cab off the rank. And I think that it also provides a bit of a, a barrier to some of us maybe wanting to get out of this place from time to time that you can't go without forcing a by-election. And so I, I'm, I'm going to ask for a little bit more work about whether that's held in a central government legislation, if it's in the Electoral Act, if it's in a local government act, because I don't think it is. But I would have liked to have thought that if we do have people being replaced, you could go to the next person off the ranking who got the next highest vote and avoid by-elections left, right and centre. Finally, I want to just talk a little bit about uh, electoral boundaries, because I've been through a few doozies in my time with my electorate. The Boundaries Commission drew up a boundary where I live in Fisher Parade in Pakaranga would have been an electorate called Hillsborough. The electorate went right over as far as the Hillsborough Cemetery. And we went to war with them because that was a draft boundary. The, uh, the Electoral Act's very clear about three things that must be taken account of. Communities of interest, geographical boundaries, and that's really quite important if you have a big chunk of water or a mountain, uh, and transportation and communication networks, which I just mentioned. So if you have a, a bus service that goes straight past your electorate office, where mine was, but did not go to anywhere else that they were proposing, you had no public lines of communication or transport. If you take Damien O'Connor, or sorry, the West Coast seat in the uh, South Island, it's longer than the drive from Wellington to Auckland. How can you justify such an incredibly long, skinny electorate? It's because of the geographical boundary that sits between that seat and what's over in Canterbury and South Canterbury and North Otago. And so you have to take account of those geographical boundaries. Why is Northcote not part of Auckland Central? Because of the harbour and you, it's, a, it's a geographical boundary. So communities of... No, he just doesn't like what I'm saying, but I'll keep saying it. Um, the... Well, that's about the most sensible thing I've heard. <laughs> And so we, we, went to war with, we went to war with the Electoral Commission and they changed the boundaries back because there were 28 organisations called the Howican Community Whatever, Howican uh, Pakaranga this, Howican Pakaranga that, nothing to do with Hillsborough or anything like that. So I, I'd like to make sure that when we're considering boundaries, this is very hard when you think it's so funny. <laughs> no, no, I, I heard it too. I don't know what it's you're doing. It's not you. We were just wondering whether it's a stabbing or a climax. We weren't sure of it. <laughs> OK, I'll leave it at that, but I would like that flexibility in C. That's why I've moved it. Thank you for that. Uh, and Councillor Ferry would like to speak. Yeah, it's pretty hard to respond in this environment right now. Um, you know how upset I was last time. OK, so firstly... Um, the Joint Governance Working Party discussed extensively um, 
options of 13 and 14, and we didn't discuss 12. One of the reasons that we came down um, to 15 was um, because of feedback from a lot of local boards that basically they were very sceptical about any change in this space. And so the idea was put up 15 for the early engagement to test ideas, to do the cost benefit analysis, um, and it may be that a different number comes out of that process. Um, so the idea was that 15 made it an easier conversation to have as sort of a, an, an alternative option to 21. Um, there was a lot of real difficulty around um, FOE and to a lesser extent um, wa uh, Waitamata and Orake um, in terms of trying to get the numbers down to 13 or below. That actually started to become really difficult. So uh, that's one of the reasons why we landed on 15. In regard to the impact of by-elections, I don't know if that's within the remit of the, um, of the reorganisation process or the representation review, but I know that we do currently have allowances for resignations within certain timeframes for the local board to choose whether or not there is a by-election. Um, or whether they choose the vacancy, and within a certain time period, they can also choose to leave the position open. Um, if that had been asked as a question while the staff were there, that could have had a, a proper answer, but we do have some of that. I would note, though, that we are moving on the Joint Governance Working Party later on to considering voting models. This, um, when we decided we were going to use First Past the Post again for 2025, um, this body... Um, determined that we wanted the Joint Governance Working Party to do some further work on STV um, for potentially for 2028, and I would say that that's probably a good opportunity to have that discussion. Um, I don't know what the legal ramifications are about making um, those changes, and we'd need to explore that further, but no reason we can't do that, but I don't think we can do it in this specific process. Uh, going back to the 15, um, so we did work through this extensively, uh, over a couple of months, um, it, we worked through it as consensus and then um, voted on it. Uh, the feedback in the mayoral survey that he did of elected members, um, 45 people responded, so um, what's that? A bit under a third of the elected membership. And um, there were a lot of comments from local board members really sceptical about the value of any change at all. Um, and I'm quite mindful of that. Um, there is a lot of support for more power for local boards, but not necessarily um, that there have to be fewer in order to achieve that power. And we have got a separate um, work stream that we're doing around that. Um, so it is possible that there might be some things we identify through this process we can only do with larger and fewer local boards. Um, but at this stage, that's still something to be determined and um, Obviously, the governance framework review from previous terms is uh, still in the implementation phase. So um, I will be voting against the amendment. Uh, I will be supporting the, um, what was supported by the working party that I chair, um, which is to put 15 local boards to early engagement. Thank you. Thank you for that. Very clear. Very good indeed. Uh, Councillor Lee, please. Yes, I, I, I want to... Um, I'll, I'll address the, the amendment, but really take this as read for the, for the whole deal and I'll get it over with. Um, I recall an article in, in the Herald some years ago by Professor Richard Mulgan of Auckland University uh, Political Studies Department, and he was the son of the famous and illustrious John Mulgan, um, the brilliant young novelist who, who died at the end of World War II and served in the British Army, but he was in New Zealand nonetheless. Um, Richard Mulgan um, talked about, I think, a phenomenon called Roger politics. And it, um, he argued that along with the um, political, uh, financial and uh, economic objectives of the, of the neoliberal project, there was, there was another aspect of it, and that was a diminution of democracy, hence the abolition of elected harbour boards power boards, hospital boards, etc., etc., and radical downsizing of, of local government representation. Richard Morgan called that Roger politics, and I, I think it's still an accepted um, assumption 
in, even in this room at the end of 2023. Mr McNaughton talked about the Royal Commission when it came to downsizing local boards, and I, I got the impression he used the, he, he quoted the Royal Commission as advocating for six local boards, which was a, a, a weight, if you like, to bring down the number um, from the present 21. Actually, the Royal Commission did, didn't advocate any such thing. The Royal Commission did advocate, uh, did find for an Auckland Council, abolishing the Regional Council and all the other uh, legacy TLAs. And the Auckland Council, and I think it may have been mentioned, uh, was to have 23 councillors, including three Māori, two elected and one chosen by mana whenua. Ten of the councillors were to be at large, and I think that's mentioned in the rest from wards. Then the Royal Commission argued for four urban local councils and three rural local councils, and the urban local councils were Waitemata Local Council, which was the North Shore, um, 15 councillors. The uh, Waitakere Local Council, 11 councillors. And then there was the biggest one, the Tamaki Makauro uh, Local uh, Council, um, 22 councillors. That's on as well as the Auckland Council. And then there were the two rural local councils, a Rodney Local Council with seven councillors, and Hunua Local Council with six uh, councillors. No mention of local boards. There were, however, the equivalent of local boards, and there were just three of them. Three community boards, one for Great Barrier, one for Waiheke, and one for the city centre and waterfront. So all of those were advocated by the Royal Commission, not six local boards, as Mr McNaughton may, unless I got the wrong impression, said. So that's, that's what the Royal Commission actually wanted. I, I, I think, um, members, that we're really getting into something they call displacement behaviour. We have major challenges um, running Auckland Council and its CCOs, indeed fixing it, and I think Dickering around with the number of local boards, A, is, though it's not intended, is disrespectful to our elected colleagues who have a mandate just like we do, um, and is missing the whole point. And the whole point is what people really want is their local council and their regional council, which we are, to be one, run more e efficiently and more democratically, and I believe that the people of Auckland and the people of New Zealand want more local and local government, not less. And that's, that's why I cannot support the whole process. Thank you very much. Thank you for that, uh, Councillor Lee. Uh, Councillor Newman, please. Uh, look, just briefly, um, Your Worship, and I just want to speak to the amendment. Uh, look, Morris, the, the, the number 15 largely stems from the discussion around FO and the person that was probably more outspoken than some in relation to, to FO's representation was me, that because um, whichever way you looked at and tried to cut these numbers, um, you either had FO cut in half or you had a completely wrong sized um, local board to the west or a local board to the east, which and that didn't address the, the obvious issue, injury to foe, which is the now established communities of interest being split. I just want to read, uh, I asked Warwick McNaughton to go back to the uh, Local Government Commission's um, determination from 2009 when the foe local board was established. Well, he said, uh, recognition of communities of interest is key criteria in our decisions on ward boundaries. On the basis of the linkages between Newland and Avondale areas, we consider the number of options for ward arrangements. These included three-member ward the, um, for the extended Waitakere City, or three-member ward for Newland area extended eastwards to include Mount Talbot and Mount Roskill, which is effectively the Albany and Pukitapapa local board. Um, now, <clears throat> whilst the conversation is talking about local board reorganisation, the communities of interest argument apply. So, I think that um, 
you'd have to you'd have to accept well I do anyway that um, you'd want to go into this proposal um, trying to acknowledge communities of interest which is why phone needed to exist as its own local board area which is why the option that was landed on um, has been agreed by the majority of governing body members I think um, so that's why I can't support the, the change to the numbers. On the issue of um, the other matters, as I understand it, the Local Electoral Act does provide for, within 12 months of the election, um, if a councillor or a local board member resigns, that their position can be uh, held vacant or a, a person appointed or a by-election. Um, but I do think that Chair... Um, Councillor Williamson is right. There are some opportunities to change the Local Electoral Act in relation to if somebody resigns or dies immediately uh, within a set period of time from the previous election, then there ought to be some provision for the appointment of the highest polling losing candidate to then be appointed if, that, if such a person exists. But anyway, so I, don't, I can't support the amendment, Morris, but I do think there are a number of arguments that he's raised which need to be addressed in the advocacy to central government because there will be an amendment for the Local Electoral Act next year. Well, thank you for that. That clarifies that. Um, Councillor Henderson, please. Hi, thanks, uh, Mayor. Look, I, I um, can't support the amendment. I'll, I'm getting a little bit of reverb, sorry. Um, but, you know, if we were to go to a more vague resolution of 12 to 15, I think there's a strong argument that the Joint Governance Working Party would have to reconvene, do all the work all over again that's taken us, you know, the better part of a year to do. And uh, thanks, Councillor Ferry and others for that. Um, we'd have to go and do that all over again. Uh, I don't know how we'd get it done before the 2025 election, and it would hold up the Ward Council boundary work that we're required to do. Uh, we'll also hold up the equity funding work, which is the real issue for so many councillors and local board members out there. Um, so, you know, suffice to say, I'm not going to be supporting it. Um, I don't need to talk about the comments around by-elections because it's not in the resolution, but I just remind colleagues that plenty of us actually do stand for political parties and local boards and ward council elections, uh, myself included. Um, I'll just finish off with the matter before us, so you know to come back to me. Um, look, I think after 13 years, it is high time to look at whether our current arrangements are serving us well, serving us appropriately. Um, I have received plenty of support, actually, people calling me all the time uh, for a united Waitakere uh, from so many different quarters. But I'm really interested in how widespread that view actually is, because we've had 13 years to bed in the system now. And I look, I acknowledge the faux local board. Uh, that is really a community of interest and something that is carved out a unique identity uh, that it really is to be celebrated. Um, and I learned a lot through this process around that. Um, I'd also just finally add that there's been some increase in conservatism, uh, small c, uh, around uh, the local board boundaries uh, and appetite for change uh, around some of the working group uh, discussions. And I myself have started to feel a little bit more conservative than maybe at the start of the process. But I think it really is high tide to ask communities that are really experts here on what they think. And uh, we keep an open mind, but we definitely need to go with the 15 and get on with it. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Councillor Sires, please. Thank you very much, Wester. If I'd like to speak uh, speak to the speak to the uh, amendment. Um, uh, first of all, my apologies, Maury, for that, um, for yelling out when I, I've just stubbed my toe and I think I've broken my little toe on the corner of my desk. So it wasn't that I was uh, anti your amendment, mate. In fact, I'm actually uh, going to speak in favour of it. Um, I'm speaking in favour of it because the, uh, for, for the reasons that you put it up, Morris, what you explained in terms of giving some options going forward uh, and the flexibility to, to examine that, I, uh, um, I perhaps differ to some of my colleagues in terms of uh, feeling that it would be more inefficient to have fewer local boards. I think I think it would actually be more efficient uh, as long as they were empowered. So fewer local boards, and, uh, ramp them up and empower them, particularly around expenditure options with capital budgets and particularly transport capital budgets. Um, but it really, there's two things we can control here. One is the number of local board boards out there, and therefore local board representatives thereof, and also how much we do 
ramp up their abilities to make more decisions uh, uh, with more budgets closer to their communities, and that's really the key to it. What we the the one factor where we can't uh, control is uh, who gets elected. That's up to the public. They will decide uh, which local board members they have confidence in representing them and will vote accordingly. And, and uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, it's that's what we can't control is how much a local board member at an individual level will engage with the community and be seen to uh, be effective in representing their community voice. That we cannot control, that's up to local board members. So, um, in closing, your worship, I just uh, I will be voting in favour of the amendment. Um, and Morris, uh, thank you for putting it forward as an op option for us to consider. Okay, uh, uh, Councillor Philip Palmer. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, when Councillor Ferry was with our staff at front, I acknowledged the work that she has done, but also the joint working part, political working party. So I'll do that again. Um, Councillor Lee, you amaze me sometimes in regards to the, the history that you end up giving us around this table. And I have to agree with the words you said, which was, this is respectful, disrespectful to our local boards. And it is. It is disrespectful. I want to acknowledge um, my chair of the Mangere or Tahuhu local board, Tawanu'u Nick Bakulic. He sent an email based on the fact that the agenda, um, that today's agenda, we were going to have this reorganisation. And there's one sentence that I think sums up why I will not be supporting this, and that is less representation in a grown city will have adverse effects. And it will. It will have adverse effects. But I am comfortable in supporting this going through and through based on what Councillor Ferry, the Chair, said, which was, this is only the interim. There will be another iteration that will be coming to us, and then there will be another one, and that is around May 2024. So for me, 15 is better, and this is why I asked around the status quo. That is an option that's going to go out to the public once we end up getting the report from the Joint Working Party and also the staff. To the staff, to you, Rose and Warwick. Nga mihi kia thank you to you both. But uh, for me, I will be calling the division uh, on this particular amendment um, because it is disrespectful in regards to this amendment. So, kia ora, Bishop, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Philip Hyder. Councillor Watson, please. Um, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, and at the outset, I'd say I, I certainly recognise the, the constraints of this uh, a review of representation arrangements that, that we're required to conduct. But really, and I think some, some of the other members like Councillor Lee and Councillor Philippine have really alluded to the to the really the bigger issue here that, that really um, isn't able to be addressed. I mean this this is really a bit like you know moving the, the deck chairs around in the, the Titanic really. I, only in this case it's Maybe chucking a few of them off, and that, that's 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 a review. And, and the reason I say that, in all seriousness, was um, Professor Ian Shirley, who who was a pro vice chancellor of um, AUT University, a professor of public policy, right at the very outset, he he, he had something to say um, about the super city and about the position of local boards um, in respect to the super city. Um, he said that it was um, the plan, the plan that became a reality, was badly conceived strategy that effectively undermines local government in Auckland. It ignores history, this is verbatim, fails to connect in any meaningful way with the diverse populations and neighbourhoods of the region, and has established a corporate framework and process that will not gain the trust of ratepayers. And unfortunately, that's um, proven to be all too true. The most recent Citizens Insight monitoring puts trust and um, confidence in council decision making at, at 18%, um, which uh, um, is pretty consistent over the last few terms of council. 
Um, and when it came to the local boards, Professor Shirley said that really governance was equated with, with kind of managing a business and reducing democracy to a, a token engagement in the decision-making systems of local and regional government. I won't go on to say what he said about the 21 local boards because um, it, it's not uh, particularly uplifting, but suffice to say he saw, the, um, he, he saw the boards as being largely irrelevant to the major decision-making that's occurred. Now, that, that, that was the, the, the critique of a, you know, a professor of um, public policy. I, I think a number of the, the issues that he's identified have have come to fruition and been, been pretty much part of the, the substance of the super city for quite some time now. So, so as much as I, you know, I acknowledge the attempt by um, this group to, you know, to try and make things better, um, it, it's, it's really like old uh, you know, Nero playing his fiddle while, while Rome burned. There's a much more fundamental issue that has to be addressed here um, in terms, and we and we haven't, you know, we're having this review, but we haven't had the the real review, had the CCO review, but we haven't had, never had a review of the council, not by any of the governments, not by National, not by Labor, and that's what that's really, you know, if we're going to get down to brass tacks, that's that's really what needs to happen because, with all due respect to everyone who's been involved from the start, I don't think it's worked. I think what Professor Shirley has said has been pretty much borne out. And it's going to need something far more fundamental change without burning the house down entirely that addresses that issue to do with representation, to do with um, history, to do with diverse populations that, that just doesn't catch it in this model. And I think anything that tinkers around or tries to make it work a bit better, um, it will only achieve just that will only alter things in a very meaningful, uh, rather superficial way, and in some cases like this, perhaps, you know, uh, affect the one part of it does have a little bit of local connection, and that's the local boards who do try to, you know, uh, engage with their community. So in the perverse way, you know, it could be detrimental uh, if, if perhaps pursued to its logical conclusion. So that, that's my reservations, uh, Mr Chair, and I, I think it's important, you know, to, to put kind of the reality on the table as far as some of us around here are, is that there really needs to be a review by this government and that a, that a new structure comes out of it that actually addresses this, these failures that Professor Shirley uh, identified before the whole thing had even started. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, that's a bit bleak. We'll try Councillor Leone. Uh, kia ora, Mayor. I'll just keep mine very brief, but I won't be supporting the amendment going up. Um, I have. I do want to acknowledge Councillor Ferry um, and those that have actually said supportive comments about the faux local board. Um, we had very long discussions about this in, in the committee. So I think we really have to um, think about the fact that we've had these extensive corridor through there that we should be taking into account what was agreed. Uh, so I won't be supporting this today. And I know that the um, obviously the Faux Local Board are really concerned about the other options that have come up. Thank you. Council, oh, De Deputy Mayor Simpson, apologies. Uh, that's okay. Uh, look, I'm, I don't have a problem with the amendment, actually. Um, I think you've basically done a lot of the work anyway, um, and it's just an option. This is not the final decision. It's just an option. And I just want to thank you for your work that you're doing on the joint governance. I mean, what a good I mean, minute. You've taken on a insert word that's appropriate, a challenge. Um, and and I, really, I really think you've done an amazing job, Julie. Um, but, but I just think that uh, widening the, te the tent for another option is, is not a problem. It's not the end result. It's, you've basically done 90% of it anyway. So I don't have a problem supporting the amendment. Happy to support it. Thank you for that. Councillor Bartley, are you out there? Oh, there she is. I am out here. Um, we can see you I now. just wanted to come in. 
Oh, thank you. Just wanted to commend the work of Councillor Jolie Ferry and the joint working group um, because this is, uh, yeah, a major issue for our city. So I appreciate all their work in it. Um, I don't support the amendment in going down to 12. I actually believed in the subsidiarity of the super city and giving more uh, power to local boards and more voice to local. So not even keen to go down to 15, but um, we'll support the consultation, you know, for the 15, but definitely I'm not going to support 12. Thank you. Okay, for that, um, I'll just sum up. Uh, I haven't got a strong view either way, but the point is to empower local boards and give them more decision making, but that's hard if there's so many and they can do more if there are fewer. So we'll, I'll go to the, um, uh, to the amendment which um, is only an option in a whole series of options. So, I'll, I'll, do we, you know, you can, do you want a division or you just, I thought you might. So, um, I glanced across just to prove you here. Um, <laughs> so, this is a, a division on where the 15 becomes between, is it 12 and 15? Okay. So we're voting on whether or not 15 is becomes 12 to 15. Is that right? Okay, so um, you call it out there, Sandra, with an R. Thank you. Councillor Baker? No. Councillor Bartley? No. Councillor Dalton? No. Councillor Darby? No. Councillor Ferry? No. Councillor Filipina? Against. Councillor Fletcher? Yes. Uh, Councillor Foley is not online. Councillor Henderson? No. Councillor Hills? No. Councillor Lee? No. Councillor Leone? No. Councillor Newman? No. Councillor Sayers? Four. Deputy Mayor Simpson? Yeah. Councillor Turner? Four. Councillor Walker? Yes. Councillor Watson? No. Councillor Williamson? Yes. Mayor Brown? Oh, yes. So that's lost 12 votes to 7. Righto. Thank you for that. Okay, well, that makes life a bit easier. Are we ready to go for the actual substantive uh, original thing which has been flogged to death? Surely there's nobody else going to say anymore after two I hours. Will. I will. I will break the mould and I'll say something. And you're what? <laughs> now this this is this is important actually. Um, I did like Councillor Elf. I I did hear the words of Councillor Lee. I, I my ears pricked to what you were saying, Councillor Lee. And I actually uh, some of these arguments um, that I've heard about you know going to fewer fewer boards for me that it's it's all code for greater control and it's in the opposite direction to where. I think Auckland Council should be going, and that's greater devolution. Um, and Mayor, you just you just said you know it's all about democratic decision making by local boards. That's actually not what the statute says. The statute says by communities. Now that that is devolution. So I'm in the devolutionist camp. I'm not in the control freak camp. Not I'm saying you're a control freak. Um, <laughs> and and I think you know unless we recognise that devolution is our future, I, I think we are going to have an an inter, eternal problem as a council. We will not be connected in representing our communities. Um, and I have great concern that in the last thirteen years we have not come anywhere near the expectations of the Royal Commission in terms of engaging with our communities. Ostensibly, that was the charge of local boards. That was, that was the, the expected outcome from 
the, the work of local boards, that we would be have a much more enriched relationship with our communities. But it rests with us too. I'm not uh, suggesting uh, it's just with them. But um, rather than you know enabling democratic decision making, uh, I think the more we we concentrate power and authority, uh, we we move very rapidly away from Aucklanders. And um, while it might be look, it might, might look like it's more efficient, uh, the decisions are less likely to endure because they're not supported by our people. I think we've got to really search for um, a whole new way of um, you know, connecting with Aucklanders and having our, our decisions be embraced by Aucklanders because they are developed out of a, a, a very deep engagement with people. Not, we're, we're a long way off it. Uh, Councillor Philippine. Thank you, Chair, and I'll be very, very quick. Um, look, firstly, I'm glad that the two councillors in Papakura Manurea are working closely still. So, um, yeah, I just want to acknowledge that with the mover and seconder. Um, for me, I will be supporting this, but I think the key thing for me uh, and work to be done is around the population. Because the population stats is going to make a difference to all the local boards in, in, in Tamaki Makaurau. Now, I'm just going to mention three sites that I've gone through to have a look at the population stats. And I've looked at it from the Mangere Otahuhu, because that's one of the local boards in my, in my ward. Now, I went to, to one of the websites, which was Figure New Zealand, and with their one, high population is 89,300. Medium was uh, 87,000. I then went to our stats, New Zealand. Stats New Zealand had in 2018, because that's the, the only stats we currently have from them, uh, was just under 78,500, just for Mangere Otahu. I then went on to Tataki Auckland and Limited and they put a report out and, and, and the population at that stage, according to their report, uh, for 2021 was 86,700. That is a vast difference. So to, to Warwick and to Rose, I, I think if we get one, one basis for our population that is at least something that we can be consistent on would be good. Because, you know, having three of them here, so I do support the recommendations, just wanted to point that out. Thank you, Chair. Okay, I'll give Councillor Ferry the last thing she's put in all the work, but I have to say before that I do support and thank her for the extra work and the whole thing that drove this wasn't about concentration of power, it was to give them more power. And after 12 years, you've sat here and given them no more power. So I am the person who's trying to give away power, not the, not the opposite. So I won't have that. Thank you very much, Councillor Ferry. Uh, thank you. I would note that um, having been on a local board for 12 years, there was some additional empowerment of local boards over that time by governing body and by the organisation. I think the remaining, um, there are still, there is still more that could be done and the remaining cultural barrier um, within the organisation and the community where local boards are seen as lesser um, than governing body is, is a significant barrier that we still need to overcome. I'm not convinced that reducing the number of local boards would assist with overcoming that, but I'm quite happy to have that conversation and take that out to at least early engagement as per this. Um, I actually only asked to speak because there's been a lot of mention of acknowledging me and my work, but actually there's 13 people on the Joint Governance Working Party and there's a number of staff in addition to Rose and Warwick um, who've been supporting that work as well. And so I just wanted to uh, mention um, Councillor Newman, Councillor Baker, Councillor Henderson, Leone and Watson. Um, we also now have David Taipari from the Independent Māori Statutory Board um, who's bringing a lot of value um, from the local boards. We have Kath Handley, who is the Deputy Chair of the Working Party, Kay Thomas, um, Richard Northey, who has a lot of experience in this space um, and um, brings a lot of that knowledge to the table, which is really valuable. Um, John Gillan, Brent Catchpole and Angela Full-James. So I just wanted to sort of share the acknowledgement there. Um, yeah, thank you, though. Thank you very much for the Councillor Ferry, and I kept my beak right out of this. 
So um, that's not my work at all, it's yours, and thank you for that. So I'm going to put this motion now. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 To the contrary. Aye. Okay, it's carried. Thank you very much for that. It was a good long debate.